tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we journey to the wild side of the Hawaiian Islands, which include the tiny islands and surrounding waters known as Papa Hanao Mokuakea. We'll learn how to draw the Laysan albatross, and we'll enjoy a delightful song tribute to the islands by Hawaii's very own Kalika Kahiapo. All this and more on this especially wild episode of When you talk about the Hawaiian chain of islands, most people only think of the main islands from Big Island to Ni'ihau. Many are surprised to know that there are many tiny islands which lay to the northwest of the main islands. These islands were formed by large volcanoes that once towered high above the sea. Over millions of years, wind, rain, and waves have eroded the islands, causing them to fall below sea level. At that point, coral grew upon the reefs and then broke down into sand, creating tiny atolls that barely rise above the ocean's surface. Some even go underwater at high tide. So, atolls are essentially the remnants of where large islands once stood. The Hawaiian chain of islands, or Hawaiian archipelago, is about 1,500 miles long, extending from the Big Island of Hawaii to the northwesternmost atoll of Holaniku, or Kure Atoll. Papa Hanao Mokuakea has rich cultural significance and a colorful history. There are numerous old Hawaiian archaeological sites on the islands, especially on the islands of Nihoa and Mokumanamana. Throughout the years, much of Papa Hanao Mokuakea's natural resources have been exploited. Sea turtles were hunted for their meat and shells. The Hawaiian monk seal was taken for its meat, oil, and fur. At one point in history, the brig Iona was thought to have taken the last of the living Hawaiian monk seals, and for a while it was thought that the species became extinct. In the early 1900s, thousands of birds were killed for their feathers. President Theodore Roosevelt, appalled by the pillaging, began protecting the islands from bird poachers by establishing the Hawaiian Islands Bird Reservation, which later became known as the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands National Wildlife Refuge. The atolls are home to thousands of seabirds, including sooty terns, or eva eva, red-footed boobies, or ah, and Laysan albatross, called moli. The area is off limits to hunting or fishing, so the wildlife here can thrive in a pristine state. Imagine an ocean ecosystem with little or no influence of modern man. Monk seals and honu bask on the sandy shores, and the ocean is full of aquatic life. But pristine ecosystems are fragile, and when humans arrive with introduced animals, things can change pretty quickly. In the early 1900s, rabbits were introduced to one of the islands called Kamole or Laysan Island. The rabbits ate most of the vegetation which led to the extinction of several species of birds including the flightless Laysan rail and the Laysan apapane. This is the last known movie of the Laysan apapane taken in 1923. The U.S. military used several of the tiny islands to erect manned radar stations. One atoll, called Midway Atoll, became the site of a decisive World War II battle that changed the tide of war. In 2003, the Hawaiian voyaging canoe Hokulea traveled through the northwestern Hawaiian islands in an important voyage of rediscovery. It was great to have a Hawaiian canoe traveling through the sacred islands once again. The Northwestern Hawaiian Islands Marine National Monument was established in 2006. And in 2016, it was expanded to four times its original size, making it the largest protected area in the world. The sacred area was given the name Papa Hanaumokuakea. 
a name that acknowledges the union of Papahanaumoku, or Earth Mother, and Wakea, the Sky Father, who gave birth to the Hawaiian Islands. When we return, we'll get to know and draw a giant of a seabird known in Hawaii as Muli. Aloha, my name is Joni. I grew up and live in Kaneohe. I work with the Conservation Council for Hawaii. This nonprofit organization is over 65 years old, and our mission is to protect native Hawaiian animals, plants, and ecosystems for future generations. Did you know that Hawaii is the endangered species capital of the United States? Many threats to our plants and animals include invasive species, climate change, and neglect. My ancestors relied on these plants and animals for survival. They're in our DNA. So please kukua by volunteering or joining us. Mahalo. From the months of November through July, one of the most prominent seabirds in Hawaii is the Laysan albatross, known in Hawaiian as Moli. At Papahanaumoku Akea, the Moli cover the sand during nesting season. Here on the main Hawaiian islands, the Moli are now a protected species and are making a comeback. I was lucky to get to ban one of the first albatross to land on Kauai in many years at the Kilauea Point National Wildlife Refuge with the late wildlife refuge manager, Dan Moriarty. Today there are many albatrosses that land and nest on the main Hawaiian islands. It's such a joy to see them in their courtship displays, through nest building and egg laying, chick hatching, and feeding. The chicks get so big so fast, and after a while, they fledge or fly away out to sea. Young albatross may stay out to sea for the first several years of their lives. When they do finally return to land, they often tumble upon landing, which probably led to them being called goonie birds. One of my favorite parts of the moli is the delicate fade of gray right below their eyes. It looks like they must have spent a lot of time putting on makeup each day. Now I'll show you how I go about drawing the Laysan albatross, known in Hawaiian as moli. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how I go about drawing an albatross. And for an albatross, I'm gonna start off with kind of a, a pointy oval, you know, kind of like a teardrop shape right there. And that's gonna be right around that big, okay? Something like that. Remember, I'm using a pen so you can see, but you can be using a pencil. And uh, remember to press softly. How are we gonna press? Softly, that's right. Okay, I've got the body shaped up right around there. I am gonna put another oval right there where the kind of the leg or the drumstick, even though we don't eat moli, you know, we got kind of a big leg area right there. And another circle up there for the head. Okay, you start to see my moli coming to life here. I'm gonna bring a tail area out here. And the legs. The feet have kind of a little diamond shape over there. Okay, the, the beak of the mole is quite distinct. It's quite big. And here we have a basic shape of a mole, although he's only got one leg. We'll easily fix that, okay? Kind of repeat that action happening over there. And this one will be in the back a little bit. There we go. Now I'm gonna use this as a guide. It's not gonna be my actual finished lines, but if things are looking like they're in the right place, you know, those are the wings over there. The maka is the eye. Little white area back there. The beak will come around there. And voila. I have formed up my moli. Now that I've got it to this point, I'm gonna take an even darker pen, and you can take your pencil or even just press harder. And I'm gonna use this as a guide 
to draw the final shape of my albatross called Moli. Okay, so I'm going to kind of follow this line around here. Do -do 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 -do. Yep. Now I'm getting a little more accurate as to how I want things. There you have it, the Laysan albatross, known in Hawaiian as Moli. Aloha, I'm Wendy Elliott, the founder, president, and center director of the Hawaii Wildlife Center. I founded the Hawaii Wildlife Center because Hawaii has the unfortunate distinction of being the endangered species capital of the world. And prior to this, there was no resource in Hawaii to treat sick and injured native wildlife. have the Hawaii Wildlife Center. We're able to treat those individual birds and bats and also be prepared for when there is an emergency event. Hawaii's monk seals and green sea turtles have been around for millions of years. When their numbers got low, they became protected by law. These animals are returning to beaches they've not come to for hundreds of years. This causes excitement and sometimes conflict. Honuen Hina is a children's book that was painted with aloha by many artists of all ages. 
This story of coexistence answers some questions about the history of these animals, but more importantly, about their future. Available at the Kilauea Lighthouse, Patrick Ching Art in the Princeville Center, or online at patrickchingart.com. And now let's enjoy a beautiful tribute to Papa Hanao Mokuakea by Kavika Kahiapo. This song is called Papa Hanao Mokuakea. It speaks of the union between Papa, Mother Earth, and Wakea, Sky Father, who gave birth to the Hawaiian Islands, and especially the tiny atolls which lay to the northwest of the main islands. It also describes some of the plants and animals that inhabit the atolls, and why it is so important to protect this sacred place.
Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I can't wait to see what you did, so email your art to patrick at patrickteachingart.com. Aloha. The mission of the Papa Hanao Mokuakea Song and Color Book Project is to help people learn the name and meaning of Papa Hanao Mokuakea. Papa Hanao Mokuakea. Papa Hanao Mokuakea. Papa Hanao Mokuakea. Alright. Our goal is to encourage people to create more songs and art about this sacred place. 
If you have a music group, school group, hula hula, or just a group of friends, please send in your version of the Papa Hanao Mokuakea song and video to aloha at papahanaomokuakeasong.com. We'll make the songs, music, and art downloadable for free and create a coloring book that environmental organizations can use as an educational fundraiser. You can help us make these things happen by contributing to the Indiegogo funding campaign. For more information about the project, music video contest, and Indiegogo fundraising campaign, visit papahanaomokuakeasong.com. Please help us make papahanaomokuakea a household name. Hello everybody, I'm Kavika Kahayapo. Thank you so much for supporting the Papa Hanao Mokuakea Song and Color Book Project. <laughs> Sacred places need a kea. Papa Hanao Mokuakea. All right. If I were a painter, I would paint my reverie. That's the only way for you to be with me But we'd be there together Just like we used to be Underneath the swelling skies for all to see And I'm dreaming of a place Where I could see your face and I think my brush would take me there But only if I were a painter And could paint a memory I'd climb inside the swelling sky